All right. So thank you. Again, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Charmaine Villamil. I am a geologist from FIVOX. And to continue the uh, discussion of uh, Jeff uh, a while ago, we'll now talk about how we can prepare for the big one. So we will discuss um, what to do before, during, and after an earthquake. Okay, um, we want people to reimagine what the aftermath of a disaster is. Ano ba yung epekto na isang disaster? Ano ba yung itsura kapag ang isang lugar ay naapektohan ng disaster? Okay, ito po yung iba't ibang impacts. Uh, pwede magkaroon ng uh, fatalities or life loss. May mga mamamatay. There will be injuries. May mga masusugatan. There will be damages to properties, buildings, and infrastructures. So yung mga gamit natin sa loob ng bahay, yung mismong bahay natin, yung iba't ibang infrastructure and structures sa paligid natin ay maaring masira at hindi na magagamit ulit. Uh, ang mga tao mawawala ng tirahan, so they will be displaced, meaning from their original place or location, maaring kailangan nilang umalis at mag-evacuate sa isang mas ligtas na lugar. They may, they may need to evacuate to a safer place and including, of course, the animals. This was especially seen uh, after the eruption of Taal Volcano back in 2020. Uh, aside from that, there could be loss of lifelines. So we're talking about interruption in the water supply. So pag bukas nyo ng gripo nyo, wala ng tubig kasi nasira na yung supply, sorry, yung supply ng, ng tubig ng mga water utilities. There could be interruption or uh, complete uh, loss of power supply. No? Walang kuryente. Mahirap to most especially pag gabi kasi madilim na at marami pang damages yung earthquakes. There will be transportation cut off. So, ikaw na may sasakyan, maari hindi mo na magamit yan because there will be uh, a lot of debris along the way. You may not be able to use your cars to drive uh, away from the affected area. Uh, instead, you may need to walk no on um, on feet ang mga tao during the uh, evacuation. And lastly. Um, it's not a guarantee that you will be able to use your cell phones uh, immediately after a strong earthquake because of um, uh, destruction of telco facilities. And then there will be interruption in the supply of food, especially ito yung long-term effect niya, no? Um, mga tao, immediately after the earthquake, they will do panic buying. So saan ba yung nearest uh, grocery or supermarket from your place, from your homes, from your offices? So pagdating nyo doon, a lot of people will be uh, doing um, uh, panic buying. Worst case scenario, which was seen in other countries, may mga looting incidents. O mag magnanakaw na, maaring dahil sa kagipitan o pangangailangan, mag may, pag, uh, may mga uh, magnanakaw na ng pagkain, even water supply, even medicines and other essentials. There will be discontinuity of critical public services. So, I mean, say mga government services, uh, hindi yan immediately may restore But of course, itong mga government services na to, they are they are all already some of them have uh, uh, in place mga system on how to uh, continue their services and restore their businesses and speaking of businesses there will be loss of livelihood no um, mga tao mawawalan ng trabaho source of income and it would be an added cost for recovery and rehabilitation needs no after a disaster, maaring kailangan mong gumawa ulit ng bahay mo, magpagawa ulit, magpatay ulit ng ibang uh, building, or uh, 
or build your supply chain again and other economic activities that uh, would need to be restored so that we'll be back to normal. Okay? So imagine nyo to. Imagine nyo um, kung nasan kayo ngayon, ipikit nyo yung mata nyo, nasan kayo dito? Anong mangyayari sa inyo, sa pamilya ninyo, sa trabaho ninyo, at sa inyong mga communities? Now with that, let's try to answer this question. No? How do we stop disasters from happening? Bibigyan ko kayo ng formula. I'll give you a formula. It's just a simple formula. Uh, you, may, you may be able to guess what I'm trying to say here. No? Baka mahulaan nyo kung anong gusto kong ipakita dito. Okay? Sige. First, first ingredient. Number one is preparedness. And we're not just talking about workplace preparedness. It was mentioned by Dr. Bakol Kol in his opening remarks that preparedness should be at all levels. It will start with you as individuals. Mag-uumpisa yon sa inyong sarili bilang individual. No? Susunod dyan yung family ninyo. Okay? If you belong to a family, a uh, Kung nasan kayo ngayon, if you have a household that you belong to right now, to where you are right now, then yun po ang susunod. Then you will go out to your neighborhood, to your communities. Communities include yung uh, buong building, if this is a condominium uh, residences, or if it's a state, no, maraming condominiums, maraming locators, kasama yan sa community. If it's a barangay, if a church or a school, these are part of the communities. And including, of course, your own workplace, kung saan kayo nagtatrabaho. You add this to proper response. No? Isama natin dyan. Yung tamang pagresponde. Tama means you do the appropriate actions. You do it in a timely manner. Okay? So, kailan nyo to gagawin? Uh, you prepare and you respond properly uh, when the big one comes. Yung example kanina ni Jeff sa Metro Manila, the big one could come from the movement of the West Valley Fault. No? Yun yung worst case scenario, kaya big one. Kung mapupunta kayo sa ibang lugar, if you go to other places or locations, other regions or provinces, you may have a different or you will have a different big one from that of Metro Manila. Now, both or two of these elements no, will lead to safety. Okay? Safety of yourself, safety of your family, safety of your employees, safety of your residents, safety of your business, and uh, of course, yung business continuity. So no one will would have to suffer more after a disaster. Right? So with that, I would like to um, talk about what we can do before, during, and after an earthquake. Okay. Um, sorry, but paulit-ulit, we will say it over and over again. Buildings do not kill people. Uh, sorry, earthquakes do not kill people. Earthquakes do not kill people per se or itself. Hindi po nakakamatay ang isang lindot. Anong nakakamatay? Ang nakakamatay ang pagguho ng mga buildings. The, the collapse and damages to buildings will kill people. I'll just give you an example. Uh, I would say 99% of the total number of deaths uh, due to the magnitude 7.8 Turkey earthquake on the 6th of February this year can be attributed to deaths from collapsed structure. Karamihan po ng namatay nung earthquake sa Turkey and Syria nung Feb 6 ay dahil po sa collapse ng building. Ganyan po karami, 53,227. Okay? That's why 
the first step to really prepare for earthquake is to make sure that we have structural integrity. Ibig sabihin nito, matibay ang bahay natin, matibay ang buildings natin, matibay yung mga structures sa paligid natin. Okay? Jeff mentioned about the National Building Code of the Philippines. When we say code, it's actually a law. Batas po ito, no? Presidential Decree 1096. So anong dapat ginagawa? Pagbatas, pinapatupad, we monitor, we evaluate. Okay? So ang sinasabi sa NBCP, ito ay applicable to public and private buildings and structures except yung mga traditional dwellings or bahay. No? Example nito, yung mga nipahat or yung mga tree houses. Ayan, hindi po yan applicable uh, sa mga yon. And also, it's not applicable to buildings that are constructed before 1977. Ngayon, if we comply to the minimum requirements, kung sumunod tayo dun sa minimum na nire-require ng building code, it will prevent the sudden or brittle collapse of structures. Maiiwasan po natin ang biglaan na pag-collapse ng structures. Na-imagine nyo ho, pag nakatira kayo sa isang building, yung biglang pagbagsak ng building, yun po ang ikapapahamak natin. Pero yung uh, nagkaroon ng crack, Malit na crack, hairline crack, sabi nga Jeff kanina. Normal lang yon to any structures. At ang importante doon, hindi magko-collapse yung building. At pag hindi nag-collapse yung building, you will still have the chance to get out of it. Meron po kayong pagkakataon kung, may, kung kailangan na lumabas ng building na yon. Kapag sumunod dun sa minimum requirements ng building code, uh, the building will withstand intensity 8 earthquake. Okay? Jeff mentioned uh, or, or discussed in detail kung ano yung uh, iba't ibang scenario pag bawat intensity a while ago. Jeff discussed the different uh, scenarios for the different intensities a while ago using the PEIS or the FEVOX earthquake intensity scale. Now, aside from compliance to the building code, there are also engineering interventions that can be done to prevent uh, uh, further damage or to minimize damages to buildings. There are buildings who would uh, budget or put more budget on uh, including uh, base isolation designs. Meron mga buildings na naglalagay ng seismic dumpers to dump or lessen the shaking of the building. Okay? So those are things that we can do to make our buildings sound. And according to Dr. Pacheco, uh, an engineer doctor, in his uh, article in 2011, um, surprisingly, no, karamihan ng hindi sumusunod sa building code are low-rise residential buildings in Metro Manila. Why? Because these residential buildings are not, not, are not engineered o hindi po yan karamihan ginawa ng mga engineers and they are based on older standards, uh, building standards. Okay? So, challenge here uh, you try to assess, no? tingnan nyo kung yung building nyo ba engineered or is it based on the current standards for structural integrity. You have to check if your buildings are complying to the, uh, to the current uh, standards of the building. Before any disaster, before any earthquake, um, remember IEC. Okay. It's an acronym for Identify Earthquake Hazards in Your Area. We have Later on, I will show you tools that you can use that FIVOX developed to know, or uh, actually Jeff mentioned about the hazard 
Hazard Hunter PH and the Fault Finder. These are just two of the tools that we have developed so that you yourselves would uh, be able to identify the different hazards in your area. Kayo mismo po kaya nyo nang malaman kung ano yung hazards sa inyong lugar. E stands for Evaluate Hazards and Risks. Particularly for earthquake, we need to assess the structural integrity of buildings and other infrastructures. No? Self-check nyo po, inspect nyo. No? Try to do assessment and um, uh, inspection of your buildings. And after doing the inspection, it's if it's necessary, give corrections or apply controls to these hazards and risks. Now, if you are uh, trained in Bosch or the basic occupational safety and health, itinuturo po yung iba't ibang uh, safety uh, measures. No? You will start with engineering. So if there are engineering interventions that you can do, yun po yung first step. Then you also do administrative interventions like uh, example nito yung mga soft measures or non-structural measures like you have a policy in the condominium that or in the estate that you will conduct drills regularly. Uh, you will conduct orientations for the residents regularly, for the communities regularly. So those are examples of admin measures. And last resort, pinakahuling resort na po, yung use of personal protective equipment. It's not your first uh, guard. Hindi po to yung unang dapat yung consideration. Because PPE will, will only be used as a last resort to keeping you safe. And then for buildings, if you need to re retrofit or rehabilitate your structures, please do so immediately. Before the earthquake, you should be informed and familiar of uh, things that will keep you safe. Know the building emergency alarms and exits. Emergency contact numbers, locations of facilities such as hospitals, fire station and other uh, other facilities in your locality. So ano lang po ito? Um, more on uh, being informed. No? Alam nyo po kung bakit nagpapanik ang mga tao. You know why people panic when there's an emergency? Spell panic. P-A-N-I-C. People panic because people are not informed correctly. People are not informed correctly. Panic. Okay? So, kailangan alam nyo yung correct information. Skills. Alam mo bang gumamit ng fire extinguishers? Do you know how to use the first aid kit? Or do you know how to administer first aid? So these are skills that uh, you can practice on, train on to prepare for disasters or, or for any emergencies. Identify safe and unsafe spots in the house, school, workplace, and your community. So um, ang tendency kasi pag lagi kayo sa isang lugar, lagi niyong pinupuntahan, lagi niyong dinadalaw, no? you tend to overlook things that simple things that uh, may may lead to um, injury of people okay i'll give you some examples okay let's see if these pictures that i'm going to show you are good or safe zone good practices or safe zones so thumbs up yon this will uh, you you do a thumbs up no or these are not safe practices or unsafe practices and unsafe zones okay you can participate po no thumbs up or thumbs down this one thumbs up ba to or thumbs down is this a safe place is this an unsafe place okay if you did thumbs up 
yes, because they have open space for evacuation of people or occupants of the building. This one. Thumbs down because it show, picture, the picture shows narrow alleys, yung masisikip na eskinita, na surrounded by uh, a lot of cables that are uh, unsafe. No? Mga salasalabat na mga kable ng kuryente na maaring mag-cause na injury sa mga taong dadaan doon. So these are thumbs down. This one, thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, corridors that uh, are clear and unobstructed. Yung mga walang uh, nakaharang ng mga daanan, no? thumbs up po yan. Pero yung mga pintuan, mga, mga hallways na may mga obstructions, these are thumbs down. So we don't want to put cabinets, shelves, even tables and chairs that will inhibit or slow down the evacuation of the people. So we want our evacuation routes, evacuation exits to be free from obstruction so we can evacuate the people if needed immediately. This one. Do you have this in your condominium, in your office, in your uh, barangay or communities? Do you know where to evacuate, what, what routes to use during the evacuation? So if there are plans posted in conspicuous places or places that are easily seen by the people, madaling makita ng mga tao, okay, that's a thumbs up. Pero thumbs down if exit gates are uh, locked. Okay. Why so? Uh, we ask the owner of this building, why do they have, why did they lock the this particular exit? Because uh, they want to make sure that they are secured inside. So it's a matter of balancing safety and security. Dapat balance po yon Yung kaligtasan ng mga tao and also yung security ng mga tao uh, from outside uh, uh, elements, unsafe elements. Okay? So these are just some examples that you may want to see uh, in your respective locations. Um, you may have seen photos or actual videos of earthquakes in the past, both in the country and uh, other places, other countries, you know, both in the Philippines and other countries. You know? And you would see that um, there's a need to make sure that you safeguard your family members, your employees inside, inside the office or inside your homes. You know? Okay, what can we do? No, pwede niyo pong gawin, make sure to strap heavy furniture and appliances to the wall. No? Ito nakikita niyo, you see here, the, the person is trying to tie the cabinet to the wall or secure the cabinet to the wall so it will not topple and fall on you during the shaking. Secure loose breakable items like your trophies, your picture frames, your paintings and other flammable materials. Make sure to store heavy objects in the lowermost part of your shelves so that when they topple, pag natumba po yung mga kagamitan ninyo, lalo na yung mabibigat, uh, they will not fall on you and they will not injure you. If you have hanging objects like ceiling fans, wall fans, um, chandeliers or even the simple lighting fixtures that you have in your rooms always check on them make sure they are not precariously hanging hindi yung isang uga na lang po eh babagsak na sa inyo so lagi niyo po dapat ini-inspect yon. and lastly make it a practice to turn off your gas tanks when you are not using them patayin niyo po yung tanke yung LPG niyo even in the condominium some of some of uh, these um, um, condominiums would require 
the will not allow the use of LPG pero yung centralized gas uh, pipes so make sure they have you have your own switch to turn off your uh, gas tanks right okay maintain an emergency sur supply kit or yung mga emergency go bag so let me see uh, can you give a reaction who among you has a go bag already prepared mag stop sharing na po ako kalang ha to check po ako. Sino po sa inyo ang merong go bag sa bahay or sa opisina? And sa opisina, mas maganda kung parehong meron. Okay. JP, Sir JP, si Ma'am Sherry at si Ma'am Reyna. Yung nasa Azure po, yung marami natin kasamahan dyan, mga sirs and ma'ams, taas niyo po nga kamay ninyo. Sino po ang may go bag dyan? Who has a go bag? You can raise your hand or uh, use the icon. No, ilang percent sa atin dito out of the three hundred seventy plus? How many of us has a go bag? Okay. Sige ho, pwede pang magpakita. Okay. May papakita po ako sa inyo. Ito ho. sa yung sarili ko. Ayan. Meron po kaming go bag. We have this. Always near our table, underneath our table. Okay. Kung, kung pwede ko lang sanang buhatin yung camera ko para maipakita ko yung ilalim ng mesa ko. Ayan. Mas maganda ho. Pero, this for now, what I can show you. Okay? Ayan. Si Sir... Uh, Director JP has uh, his own go bag. It even has a label. So, pwede nyo pong, ang pwede nyo pong gawin kung sa opisina po kayo, no? Pwede nyo uh, mag-budget. Yung bag lang mismo, pwede nyo pong ipagawa yun. Tapos, pahiram nyo. Pag nag-resign, ibalik sa inyo yung bag. Tapos, yung mga employees, yun na po ang maglalagay ng laman sa loob. No? Kung condominium yan, the homeowners could make uh, like a sample go bag and like a uh, sample or uh, ano ba, uh, a project for the residents to come up with uh, uh, a plan para lahat po or maraming resident ang magkaroon ng go bag. Okay, thank you very much po for your participation. You may now put down your hands, right? Okay. So, kung wala pa po kayong go bag, uh, it's high time, panahon na, that you uh, create or try to come up with your own go bag. The first thing that you need to do is to acquire a list, Okay. We have a lot of references over the internet. No? Find a list. Make sure that the list is applicable to you. Okay? It's, uh, if it's for the family, then it's a family list of items. If it's for the workplace, no, it's for the workplace. What's applicable in the, the office. Uh, second thing is that decide on the number of items that you will put inside. Okay? What's the tip here? Make sure that the number of items uh, are is enough for the whole users, or if that's an individual, enough for you to survive at least the first three days, first 72 hours from the time that the emergency took place. Okay? Why three days or, or why 72 hours? Because... Help is not a guarantee immediately after the emergency. Hindi po kasiguraduhan na may tulong agad after the emergency. Maaring dumating lang sila after three days. Help could arrive only after three days. Because especially for earthquake, they may also be affected by this strong earthquake. So you have to... Uh, to survive uh, for the next three days. Then 
store the items in a waterproof bag. So our bag here is made of plastic, mostly here in front. And sa side, it has an in, uh, inner lining na it repels water. Why waterproof? Because if you if you don't want to just use this for earthquake, no? Maaring uh, pag may bagyo, if there's uh, tropical cyclones or typhoon, uh, you can also use them. Okay, and it's waterproof. Place it in a safe and easy to find place. So I, I we put ours beneath our tables. If it's at if it's at home, you put it uh, near or underneath your bedside table, okay, or along the corridor on your way out, so that you can easily get them and grab grab them and go out of the building. Make also sure that, that you check the expiration and best before dates. You have to replenish the items periodically. So for example, if you have grocery items inside, like let's say water, no? Usually, na-stale din po kasi ang water. Although walang expiration ng water, sabi ng pwede namin dati. If it's stored for a long time, it, it may not be... Uh, good to use anymore. So, try to replenish. Like, make sure, kanyari, every month, if you do groceries every first week, uh, consume the first one, the one in your bag, and then replace it with your newly, newly bought uh, grocery items. So, they will not uh, expire or they're not expired when it's time to use them. And lastly, before the earthquake, make have a plan on how to respond during and after an earthquake. Okay, it's preparing how to respond. Kasama po ito. Um, when you prepare, when you're preparing how to respond, it's still part of preparedness measures. Meaning to say, you are doing these activities beforehand. Okay. So how do we prepare how to respond? First, uh, give orientations to give information to family members and building occupants about the hazards, the possible scenario, earthquake scenario, uh, if possible, uh, the, the worst case scenario or the big one scenario, and also the safety measures. So kung kayo po naka-attend dito, maganda pong maituro nyo rin sa iba yung natutunan nyo dito. Okay? Um, it may be, it may not be today, but we will upload the video or meron na rin pong mga similar webinars that we have uploaded in our YouTube channel. You may want to show them to your household members, to other employees and other residents so they, that they can also learn the important information. Then, prepare evacuation procedure, including a plan on how to reunite and communicate with each other. So, this is very important, especially if most of the time, the family members are separated from each other because of work, because of school, because of business. No? Have a plan on how you will meet, or, uh, meet, it, meet each other again after an emergency. And have a plan on how you will communicate or contact each other um, after an emergency. Then coordinate with neighbors and local officials about community evacuation. So it's not just enough to prepare yourself, your family, but also the entire community should participate in preparedness measures. An example of preparedness is conducting or participating exercises. Hindi po ito yung Zumba exercises, no? Ito po yung mga drills, like evacuation drills or communication tests uh, on how or what to do uh, during and immediately after an earthquake. For your information, the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council it's mouthful, medyo mahaba yung pangalan. Pero in short, yung NDRIMC, N-D-R-R-M-C, we conduct earthquake drills every quarter. 
So it means to say that four times a year, meron pong sinasagawang nationwide simultaneous earthquake drill. Okay? You may participate during those and said during those drills so that um, mas um, may raise nyo pa yung awareness. You can uh, raise the awareness level of people uh, in the in your neighborhood or in your communities. Now, let's go to during. During, remember, it's more on situational. Okay? Ang during ko, depende yan. Kung anong gagawin nyo, depende yan. Kung nasan kayo, nung nangyari ang lindol. Okay? So, mag-scenario building tayo. If the earthquake happened and you are inside a structurally sound building, nasa loob po kayo ng matibay na building, what you need to do is to protect yourself from falling debris by doing the dock, cover, and hold. This is the procedure that we teach so that people will uh, not be harmed by debris like lighting fixtures or mga palitada lang ng mga uh, walls or ng kisame or ceiling boards. Okay? Falling debris. Not collapsing building. Kasi ho, ang dock cover and hold ang assumption po niya, matibay ang building. Hindi magko-collapse ang buong building. So what you do is you take refuge under sturdy tables, like this one. If you don't have tables, beds, supported doorways, elevator shafts, and against the inner walls of the building. Okay? So make sure nakasya kayo sa ilalim ng mesa ninyo. Make sure that you have spaces underneath your tables, your beds at, at home. If there's a chance, open the door so that uh, people from inside will not be trapped when in case the door jam or the frame of the door will get deformed. No? Buksan nyo immediately or assign a person to immediately open the door. Uh, so that people can still go out after a strong earthquake. Then, move away from glass windows and outer walls of the building. So when you do the dock cover and hold, you don't uh, close your eyes. Hindi nyo po ipipikit yung mata nyo or hindi po kayo yuyuko. Kailangan, pag nag dock cover and hold kayo, cover your heads okay, and your nape, pati bato. At tumingin po kayo sa paligid ninyo. Look around you. Watch out for falling debris or falling uh, appliances around you. And you dodge them. No? Uh, umiwas kayo or uh, iwasan nyo yung mga nalalaglag na bagay-bagay. Okay? So make sure uh, your tables are, underneath your tables, you have enough space. And wag nyo pong gagayahin yung mama na to na ulo lang po ang kasya sa kanya. Kasi naka-expose yung likod niya. Now, when you're outside the building, you have to move to an open area away from power lines like this one, yung mga uh, cables, electric cables that could fall or uh, uh, um, drop after a strong earthquake or if the posts would topple or fall down. Uh, move away from tall structures like buildings, towers, and do not take or go to narrow alleys. So during evacuation, even if, it's, if it is the uh, shortest way to the evacuation area or open space, avoid uh, passing through na narrow alleys. Wag po kayong mag-shortcut sa mga eskinita kasi maaring matrap kayo sa uh, daan na yon. Kapag naman nasa kalsada, pull to the side of the road and stop if you are driving. Kung kayo yun ang drive, tumi tumabi po kayo and uh, tingin kayo sa paligid ninyo. Do not attempt to cross damaged bridges and overpasses. No? Leave your car um, if you need so. 
and move away to open spaces. Do not attempt or wag nyo pong subukang tawirin yung mga may crack na ng mga build uh, na mga tulay kasi maaring matuluyan yon, matrap kayo sa loob or bumagsak yon, sumama pa kayo sa dag ay sa ilog, no? Mababasak kayo. Okay? So it ha actually happened in Bohol in 2013 and in 1995 during the Kobe earthquake in Japan. Uh, a portion of their elevated uh, expressway, similar to our Skyway, fell no, and tilted and uh, it uh, uh, affected yung mga motorists directly on that uh, affected segment of the expressway. Yeah. And then in mountainous areas, there could be landslides. So move away from steep slopes and road cuts, no? Wag po kayong tatabi sa mga matatarik na dalisdis. Stay inside the room or car if you don't have any more the chance to evacuate or move away from uh, this uh, steep uh, steep slopes and road cuts, no? Iwasan niyo pong lumabas na doon lang po kayo sa loob ng bahay or ng sasakyan ninyo. And what you need to do is to uh, position yourself in a curled up manner. No? Parang yung tinuturo po kapag may stampede. Diba? But instead of people uh, falling on you or pressing on you, there are debris. So do that curled up position to protect your um, um, your uh, organs, yung mga, yung mga uh, fragile uh, parts of your body. And, and of course, so that you will be able to breathe pa rin, okay? Even if you're trapped inside the debris. And lastly, when you're at the beach, be aware of the natural signs of a local tsunami. And if any of these signs is observed or uh, experienced, you should evacuate immediately to higher grounds or away from the shore, okay? So what are these signs? There are three. The first sign would be a strong earthquake wherein you cannot move. Malakas na lindol na hindi po kayo makagalaw or makatayo. Second sign is the sudden and unusual drop in the sea level. Yung pangalawa ho, yung biglang pag-atras or pagbaba ng tubig sa dagat. And pangatlo, unusual sound of the approaching water or the wave. Okay? May kakaibang tunog na maririnig kapag malapit na po yung uh, alon. Okay? So to help us remember those three signs, just remember shake, drop, roar. Okay? Shake is the earthquake. Drop is the unusual uh, uh, lowering of the uh, sea level. And roar is the unusual sound. So shake, drop, roar, move away from the shore. Now we go to after. After would your actions after an, a strong earthquake would depend on your own situations. No? Ibig sabihin po nun, for example, evacuation. Hindi po porke nag-evacuate po yung kapit, katabi niyong building, eh makakailangan nyo na rin pong mag-evacuate. Hindi ho. You have to assess your own condition within the building, if it's a condominium, or within your own house, no? if you have this uh, residential house no? na hindi naman high-rise. Okay? So evacuation, meaning to say, would or your actions after a strong earthquake would depend on your situation. So if you need to evacuate, the things that you need to remember are the following. First is to take the safest and fastest way out. Nauna po yung safest kesa fastest. Meaning to say, unahin nyo po yung ligtas bago yung shortcut. It was mentioned here that safest, uh, safe. Uh, the safest uh, route should be first considered prior to uh, bef or before uh, considering the shortest route, evacuation route. Bring your go bag. So after an emergency, uh, 
make sure that your go bag is ready already ready hindi yung may emergency tapos saka lang kayo gagawa ng go bag niyo no you should have prepared your go bag before so that you can bring it with you during the evacuation walk briskly meaning with urgency do not run or avoid running because it could uh, uh, cause a stampede stay calm do not push i know it's not really easy not to panic but uh if you know the correct actions if you always practice those uh evacuation procedures it gives you that muscle memory and will help you relax and you can even help other people during an emergency so kapag lagi niyo pag alam niyo po yung gagawin niyo at pina-practice niyo po yung dapat niyo gawin regularly maiwasan po natin ang pagpanic at makakatulong pa po tayo sa ibang tao. Okay? During evacuation, you cannot use your elevators, but instead you have to use the stairs. And have this body-body system wherein you check uh, others for injury after checking yourself. No? Uh, you need to say, may ka-office mate kang um, katabi mo na assigned as your body, so you are responsible for the whereabouts of your office mate or your neighbor or your household member. And then you can you should check on her or on, on him immediately after uh, an emergency. So this is a pressing question usually when we conduct um, lectures know when is the time for to evacuate in fact there was i saw one question already thrown to us about this um remember that evacuation is not always automatic as mentioned a while ago by jeff we um there are certain intensities of earthquake that we may need to evacuate there are certain levels of intensity that you not you don't don't need to evacuate to okay what's important is that you determine the criteria when to evacuate and you have a procedure or step by step uh, procedure on how to communicate or disseminate that evacuation order ang importante po sa bawat uh, organization, bawat um, offices, meron kayong threshold. You have an indicator to call for evacuation. Pag narating na po yung threshold na yan o yung criteria na yan, na meet na, then saka po kayo magtawag or mag-call uh, ng evacuation or magbigay ng evacuation order. Okay. Actually po, wala naman nasusulat yan sa batas. Hindi naman nasusulat yan sa batas. Or walang standard, uh, walang manual that tells us, oh, dapat ito, ganito, ganyan. It would always depend on the condition of a certain like, certain household, certain office. No? At kami po sa FIVOX, based on our analysis of the different impacts of earthquake, we recommend that people should evacuate if they felt an intensity of PEIS 6 or above in their own locality. And also, if there's a need and when it was declared by authorities. So, tatlo po yun. By uh, practice, ho, we have three uh, Three, kumbaga, three recommendations. First, intensity six or above was felt in your area. As need arises, meaning to say, nag quick uh, damage assessment kayo sa inyong lugar. You did quick damage assessment of your place and you've seen uh, a lot of damages that would uh, call for evacuation of the occupants. Then you can do so. It could be one of the indicators. And then lastly, if there's a declaration from authorities, so it could be your local government 
It could be your building administration, administrators. It could be the property managers. It could be your directors, your bosses, your president. No. Depende po kung sino yung may authority okay, to declare evacuation. Safety managers, safety officers, yan. Mga engineers, yan. building engineers, they, they can be considered as authorities. Now, during evacuation, yeah, make sure that evacuees like children, persons with disabilities, pregnant, and uh, our elderly members are given priority and assistance. Okay? So ulitin ko lang po ito, yung pinakita ni Sir Jeff kanina uh, na PEIS. And I just want to reiterate that at intensity 6 and above, these are damaging intensities and may need to you may need to call for evacuation. Now, after, okay, check your surroundings for chemical spills and other toxic and flammable materials, especially in the industries, no? Pag nagle-lecture po kami sa mga economic zones, mga ESA, uh, yan yung mga concerns nila, mga factories, yan, manufacturing companies, uh, Tinuturo po kung ano ba yung proper way to dispose mga spilled chemicals and mga toxic materials. The proper disposable, uh, disposal of these materials are needed. Even a clean up. Okay. Then check for fire and have it controlled. No? Maliit pa lang yung fire. Dapat masupress na yan. Ma ma Maapulan na agad. And then before you use your water and electrical lines or before you're turning on your pipes, make sure you check them for defects. So, hindi, para hindi po siya uh, lalong masira for other emergencies. Do not drive around areas of damage because we want to keep the road accessible for emergency respond, uh, responding vehicles like fire trucks, um, mga heavy equipment vehicles that will be used for road clearing and debris clearing and also in rescue of people that were trapped inside the buildings. And lastly, do not enter partially damaged buildings because aftershocks may cause them to completely collapse. So wait for authorities to declare if the buildings are, are already safe to reoccupy or if not, you have to... Uh, if not, then you have to stay out of the building and uh, go to safe areas, right? Now, for the last part of my presentation, I just would like to give you a menu no, of the different FIVOX tools that you can use for hazard and risk information and assessment. So the good news is that yung mga na-develop na to ng FIVOX na tools, they are given for free. You may access them through the through our website, through uh, downloading of uh, apps, mobile apps like uh, the one you can get from Google Play and Apple Store. So kayo mismo po makukuha nyo na yan. You don't know. You don't need to go to Fivox here in Quezon City to to get access of these tools. So what are these? If you're interested with volcanoes, we have an online archive of um, local uh, uh, online archive of active volcanoes that we've uh, identified and uh, we've we've studied here at Fivox. No? for Philippine volcanoes lang, mga bulkan sa Pilipinas lang. Okay, so you just have to log in. Uh, it will ask for like one, two or three uh, information from you. Rest assured that this information are confidential and will not be uh, used uh, or sold uh, to the public or to other, other people. No? Okay, So we have Fivox Lava. Go to the website. You can go to this website, wovo.fivox.dost.gov.ph. Uh, wovo Kailangan po may internet kayo. Then, if you want to know more or get uh, volcano information, bulletin, advisory directly on your mobile phones, download nyo po yung Volcano PH Info. Okay? So, you have an interface like this one. Uh, 
the good thing about this, it tried to make our volcano information uh, more friendly, more pleasant to read, no? Kasi mga infographics yan, mga short uh, information, not so text heavy. Uh, makikita nyo po yan directly uh, from your mobile phones, no? And if you have, if you want, uh, turn on the notification so that pag may bagong uh, volcano info, you can, you are notified if there are new uh, volcano information uploaded on the app. If you don't want to download the app, you can also uh, just search for Volcano Page Info and then you can get uh, also information uh, on this no? from your browser. Another app is the How Safe Is My House uh, application. Okay, uh, You can do actually have two ways to access this. Go directly to this website. Or download again the apps. How safe is my house? Miss Lucy, may Tagalog na ba to? Yung how safe? Ah, na app. Ah, okay. Right now po, we have, we only have the English uh, in the app and uh, on the browser. But we've already developed the material, the Filipino, in Filipino. Then, yeah, uh, for future, you know, activities. Uh, i-gagawin na po siyang app if, if it's necessary, yung Filipino version. So what can you do with this app? Uh, it's a self-check for earthquake safety of concrete hollow block houses that are made in the Philippines. No? Yung one to two story high houses or even small shops, establishments na gawa sa hollow blocks, applicable tong app na to. Just answer 12 questions, non-technical, very simple questions. And after answering those questions, you have an assessment immediately, a score, no? And it will give you an evaluation if your house is safe or, or not and what can you do uh, to uh, move forward, okay? And then lastly, we have hazardhunter.grist.gov.ph. This is the link, link of the web application. Uh, you can own, also download the app uh, on Google Play and App Store. Now, what, what can you do with Hazard Hunter PH? Para po kayong ano dito, consultant na. You're like consultants or you're like uh, scientists already because you'll be able to do multi-hazard assessment. Multi means marami. It's not just be about earthquake, but also for volcano, volcanic assessment, volcanic hazard assessment, hydromet hazards, meaning bagyo, baha, no? or storm surge. It also includes tropical cyclones, storm surge, and flooding. Uh, there's also a tool here, or we've integrated near real-time monitoring of our earthquake and volcano. So uh, if you can see my arrow, I'm, I'm hovering to the left part of the screen, my screen, and just go here, earthquake volcano monitoring. Tapos, it will give you locations of the recent, most recent uh, earthquake uh, plottings that we have um, located directly on your screen you can download maps also on this portion left side download maps for free high resolution you can use them in your planning purposes or in your orientation uh, to activities to your uh, respective areas okay now to end my presentation i'll go back to uh one of my slides at, at the beginning no? How do you stop disasters from happening? Okay. I know you've, uh, I have told you about preparedness, safety, uh, preparedness, proper response, and safety. But what I want, how, how I want to end here is that I want to emphasize the you part. Ano pong ibig kong sabihin? Na kayo mismo you yourselves could stop disasters from happening. You can prepare or you should prepare. You should respond. You should respond properly so that you will be safe 
you are protected and you are you can even help other people so good news is that people can stop disasters from happening by knowing and practicing earthquake preparedness and proper response and that so, so that you can help other people your communities safe from and resilient to disasters. Thank you very much, Paul.